Bismillah Alhamdulillah Assalatu wassalam Ala Rasulillah Nabiina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Ajma'in Wa man samasaka bi sunnatihi Ila yawmiddin Thumma amma ba'id Alhamdulillah Ala ni'mat al-islami Wa sunnah all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah. Wallahi, this is a ni'mah. This is a ni'mah that is azimah. Bila shak wa bila raib. It is a comment that we show thanks unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Banillaha fa'abu wa kun min al-shakineen. But rather worship Allah and be from those who show thanks. Be from those who show gratitude unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> we weren't able to finish everything we had uh, prepared for the last class, yani yesterday's class. We weren't able to go over everything we wanted to go over inside of that class. So, bi ta'ala, we're going to take and finish what we wanted to mention there and if there is time bismillahi ta'ala we would like to touch upon some of what we had intended originally to mention in today's uh, sitting again i want to remind everyone that and i want to and i encourage everyone to lend to me an attentive ear if they have paper and a pen to please have it at their ready. If they don't have a paper and a pen then to uh, write notes inside of the memo app inside of your smartphones. So that some of the benefit can be caught and remembered. And I want everyone as they hear the ahadith and the ayat to really focus and contemplate and reflect on themselves. Reflect on themselves and that which will better themselves and enrich their lives. Grab some benefit that they may convey to their wives, to their children and others. Bithnilahi ta'ala. And remember, the reason that we want to grab this benefit is so that we may implement it. Now, and then convey it. Because without such, we will be incapable of benefiting others. Because al faqidu shay la yu'tihi. The one who is deprived of something, he does not have the ability to give it. Because he don't have it to begin with. So this, yani, is just the mindset of what I want everyone to be in, bithnilahi ta'ala. Yesterday, we were looking at the hadith of Abu Huraira. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said The kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa siyam fa innahu li We want to look at this particular sentence first and foremost today Naam that all of the actions of the son of Adam are for him except for fasting. There is some benefit that we gain from this. There is some benefit that we gain from this. Naam. And we want to start here with this and then we'll, we'll transition back into exactly where we left off uh, yesterday. Ala kulli hal. This is important that we understand this because it will give us, bithnilahi ta'ala, uh, a renewed appreciation for the fasting. And bithnilahi ta'ala, it will be an encouragement for us 
too fast and uh, to be very diligent about our fast. The meaning of this, because I'm pretty sure we heard this, we heard this uh, hadith a lot, right? One could be safe to say perhaps every Ramadan, we've heard this hadith a number of times. Every Ramadan and prior to Ramadan and the likes of these pre-Ramadan workshops and the like, we hear this hadith. Naam, we hear this hadith. This hadith is tremendously important, but what does it mean? All of the actions of the son of Adam are for him except for fasting, for verily it is for me. What does that mean? What does this kalam mean? It's important that we know, and especially this, why? Because we hear it a lot. And it's aib. It's aib. It's yani, wrong, shameful. To hear something a lot, or to recite something a lot, it, but you don't know what it means. Naam. So what does this mean? قَالَ الْعَلَامَ عُثَيْمِينَ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَالْمَعْنَى أَنَّ الصِّيَامِ يَخَصُّهُ اللَّهِ بَيْنَ مِنْ بَيْنَ سَائِرِ الْأَعْمَالِ Allah. MashaAllah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 What does this mean? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has specified the fasting الصيام, From the other actions From the other righteous good deeds That fasting is specified Right? لأنه أي الصيام أعظم العبادات إطلاقا And this is because fasting It is the greatest of the acts of worship Period Fasting is the greatest of the acts of worship <coughs> Period فإنه سر بين الإنسان وربه because fasting, it is a secret between the slave, between the individual, the human being, and between his Lord. It's a secret between him and his Lord. Naam. لِأَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ لَا يُعْلَمْ إِذَا كَانَ صَائِمًا أَوْ مُفْطِرًا Because the individual, you don't know whether he's fasting or not. Right? Just by looking at a person, you don't know whether he's fasting or not. You don't know. Whereas the other actions... Upon looking at a person, you can tell what he's doing. If a person is reading the Quran, you're looking at him, you tell he's reading the Quran. Now, a person he's studying, reading a hadith, you look at him, you can tell he's reading a hadith. A person is praying, you look upon him, you can tell he's praying. Say, person making hajj, tell he's making hajj, making umrah, tell he's making umrah, so on and so forth. So, the other acts of worship, they're different. You see, from fasting. Whereas fasting, a person could be fasting and, and it's not known. Whether he's fasting or he's not fasting, no one knows. Naam. He's with the people and no one knows. No one knows why. Because his intention is inside of his heart. His intention is in his heart. So, we can't see that. Right? So this is a secret between him and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلِذَلِكَ كَانَ أَعْظَمْ إِخْلَاصًا And for this you will find that it is greater in the ikhlas. Naam. And, and, and I want you to, to, to keep this in mind. Because the ulama, they mention that those secret acts of worship, the secret acts of worship that a person does that nobody else knows about. Right? Like the person gets up in the middle of the night, everybody in the house is sleeping. No one in the house knows he's even up or she's even up. To pray from Qiyamul Layl at that time is 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 good and it has virtue. Why? Because it has the potential of having greater ikhlas in it. Because a person is doing it, no one knows about it. So there he's doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bila shak wa bila ray. Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Riya showing off is not there because riya is the showing off that's what is seen. A person does something that people can see it. 
There's no chance for Riyadh because no one can look in at him. Everyone is sleeping inside the house. Naam? And the like. So those secret actions, the early man, they, they encourage us to do those secret actions. Do those secret actions that don't nobody know about. Naam? Uh, and, and, and the like. Also from the secret actions, this, this is just a benefit, a side benefit. Um, one of the uh, Quran teachers, he mentioned to me many years ago, he said is that the statement of La ilaha illallah, that when one analyzes the statement of La ilaha illallah, he finds that all of the letters contained therein are tongue letters. All of the letters in La ilaha illallah, they are tongue letters. Meaning that in order to properly pronounce these letters, you need not but move your tongue. You need not but move your tongue. Right? So therefore, you don't have to necessarily move your mouth. So you can say, La ilaha illallah, without moving your mouth. And no one will know what you're saying. You understand? He says, so this is a good way to what? To secretly make dua unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that even those who are with you don't know what you're doing. This is an excellent opportunity. Because it hints to what? Those secret, those secret acts of worship. It hints to those secret acts of worship because they contain therein what? More ikhlas. So the fasting, getting back to fasting, it has more ikhlas in it because it is a secret between the abd and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was what we were talking about yesterday. What is that fasting helps reinforce, is a reinforcing of a tawheed. And tawheed, bila shak bila rayb, is the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has commanded us with. Tawheed is the purpose for which the creation was created. At Tawheed, the purpose that the prophets were sent. At Tawheed, the purpose that the books were revealed. So on and so forth. At Tawheed is yani, the uh, the greatest aspect uh, of, of 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 our existence. Is what is to establish the Tawheed. To establish Tawheed. So being that fasting has in it yani, greater ikhlas, then it shows you the superiority of fasting, and that fasting is not like other acts of worship. So from one standpoint, this is the meaning. Because it contains a greater level of ikhlas, it's not like other acts of worship, so therefore it is for Allah. So Allah Ta'ala He says, Except for fasting, for verily it is for me. Naam. This is one aspect of the meaning. فَخْتَصَّهُ Allah بَيْنَ مِنْ بَيْنَ سَائِرِ الْأَعْمَالِ So Allah Ta'ala has specified fasting yani, over the other actions. So a person can come in and say, what's one of the meanings that fasting is for me? Is because Allah has specified fasting from the other actions has specified fasting from the other actions. So one of the meanings, again, one of the meanings for that uh, all of the actions of the son of Adam are for him except for fasting, then verily it is for me, and I will reward him for it, is that what? Is that fasting is only and solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He specified it away from the other actions. That's one of the meanings. That makes sense? Another meaning, another meaning goes back to the hadith itself. Is that the, the hasana bi'ashri amthaliha in a sab'amiya du'a. That the action is t- multiplied by 10 times all the way up until 700 times. Right? Is that the action, the regular good deeds outside of fasting, they are multiplied from 10 times all the way up to 700 times. Fasting is different. There's an exception for fasting because the multiplication for fasting is far beyond 700 times. Allah Ta'ala knows best what is the multiplication of fasting. Ma'am, so this is another difference between fasting and between the other actions. Is that fasting is multiplied more than 700 times. It could be multiplied more than 700 times. Whereas the other actions is from 10 to 700. 
That makes sense? So this also enters into the meaning that fasting is for me and I will reward for it. And I will reward for it. Meaning what? More than the 700 times. Uh, 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 multiplication. Yani kathira. A lot. A lot of multiplication. More than the uh, 700 times. Naam. Also from the meaning. And some of the ulama they say, and I want you to really to pay attention to this, because this, this shows you uh, one of the identifying characteristics of fasting and how it is different from the other acts of worship. Some of the ulama they say, إِذَا كَانَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ وَكَانَ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ مظالم للعباد فإنه يؤخذ للعباد من حسناته إلا الصيام الله أكبر is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment if there is an individual who has oppressed others and he owes other people something right because remember, Yomul Qiyamah, that's the day the debts are going to be paid, Yomul Din, the day the debts are due, correct? But it's also a day where there's what? There's no money. There's no money. So if someone stole from somebody, you can't give his property back now. That's, that, that's the opportunity is done. If he, if he took someone's wealth, he can't give the wealth back. That I, that's gone now, right? If he slandered someone, backbit someone, lied about someone, stole from someone, swindled and uh, cheated someone, so on and so forth, there's no, uh, uh, what do you call it? There's no, there's, you can't make no rectification for that right now, Yomul Qiyamah, by giving that thing back or, you know, so on and so forth. There's no restitution at that point by giving back the, what you took from him inside the dunya. Except for what? What's the only thing you have to, to be given is what? Deeds. That's it, deeds. So if you stole from somebody now, you owe him deeds. You lied against someone, you owe him deeds. You slandered someone, you owe him deeds. You, 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 you hit and beat and uh, uh, abuse someone, deeds, you owe him deeds. Yeah? You verbally abuse someone, you owe them deeds. So on and so forth. Any infringement now is going to be paid in deeds. Yom al Qiyamah. So if an individual now, right, and, and this and this now is is it, it gives you it should, yani really uh, it, it encourage and, and 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 get you excited and enthusiastic and, 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 and enthusiastic enthusiastic about what about fasting Ramadan because see if you owe somebody Yom Al Qiyamah and now you got to pay them. They will be paid. Allah Ta'ala will take from your deeds and pay them from all of your deeds except fasting. They can't get your fasting. The sadaqah you gave, the salah you prayed. Okay, maybe they, they'll, they'll take from that. But the fasting, no, that's yours. They can't get that. They won't take from the fasting. Naam. So it will be taken from the deeds, but not the fasting. For inna hu la yuchad min hu shayt. Nothing will be taken from the fasting. Why? The inna hu la, because the fasting was for Allah. So this enters into the meaning that fasting belongs to Allah. The inna siyam li la wa leesa lil insan. It is for Allah. It's not for the human beings. Naam. Shi'ah the meaning said, "Wa hada ma'na jayyid." He said, "In this meaning is good." This meaning is excellent. Now, this is an encouragement so that an individual knows whatever he puts forth from fasting, that is not subject to be taken away from it in the event you owe somebody something, Yom Qiyamah. So you know that's yours. That'll be there. Why? Because when you did that, Allah Ta'ala said that was for him. Right? So that's that's beautiful, is it not? Now, we don't want to owe nobody nothing, Yom Qiyamah, period. But in the event we gotta pay somebody something, you wanna at least know that you're gonna keep something, correct? So if an individual increases in his fasting, right, then this is an indication and a sign of what? That in Bihmilai Ta'ala, they won't go bankrupt your Munqiyama. Why? They got fasting still in their account. That's beautiful. You understand? That that is an encouragement right there, and 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 it shows how fasting is not like other actions. So these three uh, meanings are from the meanings that enter into 
what is meant by that fasting is for me. Now, remember yesterday we mentioned that the ikhtilaf is of two types. Ikhtilaf to Baud and ikhtilaf to nowhere. Right? Ikhtilaf to Baud is the ikhtilaf that one opinion is wrong. Somebody's wrong, right? And then you have the ikhtilaf to nowhere, where they're all right. They're all right. It is different angles, different you know, uh, of, of, of what is correct. Now, when you look at the meanings that enter into uh, uh, what is meant by that fasting is for me, and I will reward for it, you find that these, all three of these, could be taken together. So therefore, the early man is mentioned that what? So therefore, it means, well, all three. Because it's not like you, you take one to the, to the detriment of the other, but they can all coexist and all simultaneously be there. So therefore, what? The meaning is, what? Well, all three. All three is from the meaning of Ibnillahi Ta'ala. Naam? So fasting, bila shak wa bila raib, is something that is tremendous. Fasting is of extreme importance. Naam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is noble book. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you who believe. When a believer hears this now, his ears should be open now. They should be, you know, uh, very attentive of what is being said. Allah Ta'ala, He says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ That fasting has been written upon you. As it was written upon those who came before you. Before we continue, before we finish, what is meant by كُتِبَ what is meant by kutiba written upon you? Because it being written upon you, meaning what? Meaning what? Furi law. Meaning it's far. It's, it's, it's been made wajib upon you. It's obligatory upon you. So I want you to write in your notes that the meaning of kutiba is furi law. That it has been made obligatory upon you. Fasting is obligatory upon you. Naam. As it was prescribed to those who came before you. There's a lot of benefit contained in this ayah, but because of time, and I don't want to take from the time of my uh, beautiful brothers, we're going to yeah, just give you some, some, some pieces. Is that, as Sir Earth mean, he mentioned that the mere fact that Allah Ta'ala informed us. That fasting was made obligatory upon us, like was made obligatory upon those who came before us. It gives the heart content. Why? Because by Allah informing us of that, this shows Allah's gentle treatment to His creatures. Because He's informing us that we are not alone in this. That there are others who also fasting was written upon them. And when you know that there are others who share with you yani, in a thing, it makes it easier upon you. It makes it yani, uh, more uh, lighter upon the soul. Now if you reflect upon calamity, for example, and fasting is, is a beauty. Fasting is something that is great, it's awesome, it's tremendous. But if you go to the flip side and you, and, you, and you reflect upon calamity, one of the things that helps people when dealing with calamity is to know that they're not by themselves. Right? It's to know that they're not by themselves. One of the things that helps the believer uh, dealing with the calamity, you may hear the early man, they, 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 uh, they say the statement is that what? Is that worse has happened to better. Now, when you look at the enemya, look at the Russo, look at what the, the lives that they had and how difficult it was and how, how rough and tough and so on and so forth. So no matter what we may be going through in our daily lives, when you reflect upon yani, the enemya and the Russo and what they went through, you realize worse has happened to better. So that helps you better cope and deal with what you're going through. Correct? Right. Now, if a good tiding comes to you, a benefit comes to you, and those who you love, also that benefit goes to them, that helps increase you in your joy. Right? If someone came to you and said, we will gi we give you a house, beautiful house, we gave it to you. Right? You become happy. Alhamdulillah, got a, a, a nice house. But if they come and they say, and we're going to give your mother a house. And we're going to give your auntie a house. And we're going to give your children houses. Now you're even more happy. 
even though those houses are not yours, but now you're more happy because not only am I getting a house, but my mother gets a house, my children get homes, and my aunts and uncle get homes. Subhanallah, now you're even more overjoyed and happy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, He informs us that fasting has been written upon us as it was written upon those who came before. Because what? This is from those things that bring joy to the heart of the believers, knowing that fasting has been written upon all of the believers ever was upon them to fast. So this makes us even more happy, right? It makes you even more happy to know that what, for lack of a better term, that what you're part of a legacy of fasting with the believers makes you more happy. Correct? Allahu Akbar. Now, as Shaykh Uthameen rahmatullah alayhi, he says, فَوَجَّهُ اللَّهِ الْخِطَابِ للمؤمنين, that Allah Ta'ala he, get, he, and he addresses the believers He addresses the believers Now I want, I want everyone to open up their ears And, yeah, and listen, good Why? Why did Allah Ta'ala address the believers here? Why is the nida here? Why is the calling here? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O you who believe Why is the call here addressing those who believe? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he calls by different things, right? Ya ayyuhal nas, O human beings, Ya ayyuhal insan, O yani human, humans, huh? and the like, O mankind, O humans. But this address here is what? Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, showing us that there is a connection between the iman and between that which is going to be mentioned next. So why is it addressed to the believers? Limada, Shirat Imini says, لِأَنَّ الصِّيَامُ الرَّمَضَانِ مِنْ مُخْتَضِيَاتِ الْإِيمَانِ Because fasting Ramadan is from that which is necessitated by Iman. It is necessitated by Iman that you fast Ramadan. لِأَنَّ الصِّيَامُ الرَّمَضَانِ يَكْمِلُ بِهِ الْإِيمَانِ Because fasting in Ramadan by way of it a person he completes his Iman. <clears throat> by what? By fasting in Ramadan. When a person hears this and he hears this connection, then this is what? This is an encouragement to he or she to fast Ramadan. This makes you really want to fast Ramadan when you see the connection between the fasting of Ramadan and between the Iman. The Shaykh he says, he says, uh, لَأَنَّ تَرْكَ الصِّيَامِ الرَّمَضَانِ يَنْقُصُ بِهِ الْإِيمَانِ Because when a person does not fast Ramadan, then that will decrease his Iman. It will have an ill effect upon his Iman. And of course, this is, this is speaking about those individuals who don't fast and they have the ability to fast. This is not talking about those individuals who they are not uh, able to fasting. So those who have a sickness that is perpetual, that they don't anticipate any type of uh, a cure from it in their lifetime, then these people, they're not allowed to fast. They're not allowed to fast. So for them, because they can't fast, what do they do? Then they feed a poor person every day in its, in, in its stead. So they still have the khair that they're going to get, but their khair comes from feeding people because they can't fast. So for a person who has diabetes, for example, you, you, they can't fast. Because the sugar, it dropped, then what happened? They're under threat of going into a diabetic coma, which could result in, in death. Allah Ta'ala wants ease for us. He does not want for us difficulty. So if a person has a condition that doesn't allow them to fast, like certain stomach uh, conditions and ailments and so on and so forth, uh, certain conditions uh, and sicknesses where a person is required to take medicine uh, regularly throughout the day on a certain period of times, and if they don't take it, it has very detrimental effects upon their health, they cannot fast. So we're not talking about these individuals. But a person who has the ability to fast and he doesn't fast, then bila shak bila rayb, that will decrease his iman. Because with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, what is iman? What's iman? It's for you guys. Iman is what? Actions, limbs, actions of the tongue, statements of the tongue, and actions of the heart. Wait, what else? That's correct. Iman is what? <clears throat> Statements of the tongue, actions of the limb, belief in the heart. What else? Faith. It means faith, ahsan. But what else? Prayer. No, no. Oh. Increase and decrease. Now, it increases and it decreases. Like, it goes up with what? 
Or good deeds? Good deeds, obedience. It goes up. Bad deeds, what it do? Go down, disobedience. Go down, disobedience. Naam. Wait. The ulama, they have it, sit to nunat. They put it together, sit to nunat. Six nuns, right? No, khamsa nunat, five nuns. Ahwa. Khamsa nunat, five nuns. Right? And it, because each thing ends in nun. Al iman, amal. Oh, al iman, let's go first. Al iman, qawl bil lisan. See, lisan ends in nun. Qawl bil lisan. Amal bil arkan. I'tiqad al janan. Yazid bi ta'at al rahman. Wa yanqus bi ta'at al shaytan. Five nuns. That iman is a statement of the tongue. Huh? Lisan. Lisan. No. Right. Action of the arkan. Action of the limbs. Arkan. No. Right? Two nuns. Right. I'tiqad al janan. Janan. Heart. Belief in the heart. No. Janan. No. Right. It increases with obedience to Ar Rahman. It increases with obedience to Ar Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many nuns is that so far? Four. And it goes down with obedience to Shaytan. No. So that's why they call it five nuns. No. But that's Iman. So if a person doesn't fast Ramadan, that's a, that's a sin. Correct? So that's going to do what to his Iman? Decrease. Which one? Decrease. Decrease. Decrease with the D, right? Not the not the N one. It increases up, decrease down. But it's going to decrease, right? Oh, the I one. Uh, I said N, right? N sound I increase, D decrease. But huh? <laughs> Don't get me confused now, man. I start, you know, what I mean, making my own spelling for stuff. <laughs> uh, so. Not fasting is going to decrease a person's iman because he's making sins now. He's making sin. It's going to decrease the iman, and it is in, it is incumbent that we safeguard our iman. We safeguard our iman, and we safeguard our iman by doing righteous good deeds and staying away from sin. If we if we fall into sin, what do we do? We repent. We repent. Now we make tawbah unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so with this, if a person doesn't fast in Ramadan, it decreases his iman. Shaykh Uthameen says, وَاخْتَلِفَ الْعُلَمَاءِ فِيمَا لَوْ تَرَكَهُ تَهَاهُنًا The ulama they differ. If a person leaves off fasting due to laziness, and it's important we understand this. They differ if a person leaves off the fast because he's lazy. Now, now if a person leaves off the fast obstinately, huh? He said, "I'm not fasting Ramadan because you don't got to." Do the ulama differ about that person? No. Because no. that person's what? Arrogant. He's arrogantly. Nah, that's a safe answer. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the person is what? He's a kafir. He's a disbeliever. He has to make kufr. If a person says, ain't no such thing as Ramadan, fasting at Ramadan, that person's a kafir. The Rodin Ma don't differ about this person. The person that doesn't fast absolutely, huh? then this person's a kafir. There's no ikhtilaf there. The ikhtilaf comes if if a person doesn't fast, but it's out of lazy. He say, I know I should fast Ramadan, but yeah, I just don't. For whatever reason, I'm lazy. Okay. Right? That that type of person. <laughs> Allah must I had a Muslim tell me one time, yeah, it's hard for me to fast for Ramadan. I said, why? He said, I'll be fasting, man, I get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I said that's not mushakta ya Sheikh. It's not that's not difficulty, man. What are you talking about? The Mashaykh they mentioned you got a person gotta have a true difficulty, a medical reason, medical ailment that doesn't allow you to. He said, I get hungry. I said, Come on, man, fear Allah. What do you mean? <laughs> Allah was dying. Like, so a person out of laziness, he doesn't fast, then what then what's said about this individual? Now the Shaykh he says, Yani hal hal Does he become a kafir or he's not a kafir? The Shaykh he says, well, sahih, the correct opinion, ennahu la yakfur. He does not become a kafir. He's not a kafir. Naam. He says, well, ennahu, and I want you to write this down. This is a qa'ida right here. Write this down. Ennahu la yukfar al-insan bi-tarq al-shay 
من أركان الإسلام سوى شهادتين والصلاة. Because a person does not become a Catholic by leaving off and abandoning anything from the pillars of Islam except the shahadatain and the salah. If a person say he don't want to say the shahadatain, he's not a Muslim. Not a Muslim. He leave off the shahadatain, not a Muslim. Right? But, and if he leave off the salah, now, no, nah, not nah, Muslim. Now with the salah, we know there's is ikhtilaf. We don't want to get too much into it because it'll draw away from what we really want to talk about right now. But <clears throat> the strongest opinion, and when you hear strongest opinion, understand as nasbi, as as the alama uh, Muhammad al Jami he mentioned. Whenever you hear anybody say, "Yani uh, rajih," the strongest opinion. Yeah, that's that's nusbi, meaning to them. Because the strongest opinion to me may not be the strongest opinion of somebody else. But the strongest opinion to me as it relates to the issue of is a person a kafir if he don't pray or not, then it is like uh Al Alama Sheikh Saleh Abdaziz Al Sheikh he mentioned, is that not praying is kufr. Period. Not praying is kufr. He says now, how do we understand that it's possible that some people who don't pray are still Muslim? He said because not praying is kufr. Just like praying to other than Allah is kufr. If a person prays to a wali from the awliya, that's kufr, correct? No one debates that. That's shirk, it's kufr. This makes you a kafir. No one debates that. But how many of the Muslims in the world pray to saints? How many Muslims in the world pray to their awliya? The Sufi uh, people, huh? they pray to their awliya, dead in the grave. They pray unto them. Now you have ignorant Muslims, they pray to the Prophet You see them in Medina, facing the opposite direction of the Qibla, praying to the Prophet Now, do we say, all of these Muslims are kufar? No, because we're not khawadij. You know what I'm saying? No, we don't say they're kufar. Why? Because they may have an excuse. Because see, in order for a per- in order uh, in order for a kufar to fall upon a person, right? As Sheikh she- Al-Bani he mentioned, it's qaida, write it down. Is that a person has to one, fall into kufar, right? He falls into kufar, meaning he does kufar. Then, the proofs and evidences are established against him. Number two, proofs and evidences are established against them. The person understands the proofs and evidences established against them. Because the proofs and evidence can be established, but if they don't understand what's going on, then they you know they, they still have an excuse. Okay? So they, they have to understand the proofs and evidences, right? And then if they're consistent and obstinately remain upon the kufr that they was doing after knowing that what they was doing is kufr after the proofs have been established against them, then kufr falls upon them. Then they become kufar. That makes sense? So in other words, all of the preventative factors have to be removed and the proofs and evidences have to be established. From the preventative factors is that what? Is that a person is ignorant. He doesn't know. If a person is ignorant, then he's not a Catholic. Now, the vast majority of the Muslims in the world who do this, we can safely say what? They're ignorant. They don't know. They're ignorant. Right? Also, from the preventative factors is that if a person was given a false interpretation, if one of the ulama su, the evil ulama, taught them falsely, telling them you can pray to the awliya and it doesn't uh, negate your tawheed, it's in line with tawheed. Because they tell them that tawheed just means that Allah is our Rabb. That's all tawheed means. But you can maybe pray to someone else so they can get you closer to Allah. It doesn't infringe upon tawheed. Because the meaning of la ilaha illallah is la rabba illallah, la khalik illallah, so on and so forth. So they teach them a wrong meaning. So these people do it while saying la ilaha illallah because they don't, be, they don't know, they don't believe that what they're doing infringes upon the kalima of la ilaha illallah. So they've been lied to. They've been tricked, bamboozled, hoodwinked. Right? So these individuals, they, they, they're not kufar because they have an excuse. So on and so forth to the end of what the excuses are. So the excuses have to be removed and then the proof has to be established and then they become kufar. Now, this is the principle. Now, and this is very important, right? I can't, I, I can't uh, uh, overstate this. Is that is it coming to know that principles inside of the religion are derived from the text? 
That's important because we live in a time where people get put into a jam, huh? They get cornered and they just start making up principles to get out. New, newly invented principles. You understand? At the early mind, they warn against. Stay away from these people making up principles in times of fitna. Principles that ain't nobody never heard about ever before right now. You understand? Yesterday was something different. Now you're in the jam. Oh, but the principles say. What principles? I ain't never heard of principles before. What are you talking about? That's new. Ain't nobody before you heard of that. You ain't said that last year. You ain't said it the year before. Now it's a principle since when? Since you just made it up. Okay, got it. Anyway. Principles, the real principles are derived from the proofs and evidences. So, where do we get this understanding from that a person has to fall into kufr then the proofs and evidence established upon them before they become a kafir? Where do we get that from? Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى Whoever goes against the messenger after clear guidance is made known to them. نَوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَوَّأَ رَسَلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And they follow a way other than the way of the believers. نَوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّ وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ سَادْ مَصِيرًا We will leave him to what he left himself to, enter him into Jahannam with a worse of final abodes. The shahid is Allah Ta'ala says, مَنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After clear guidance is made known to him. Allah Ta'ala just didn't say whoever goes against the Prophet, uh, the, the messenger Allah Ta'ala didn't say that Allah Ta'ala didn't say whoever goes against the messenger and follows way other than the way of the believers in the ayah but Allah Ta'ala says after clear guidance was made known to him showing that what? it has to be established the hujja the person has to be shown that you're going contradictory to the Prophet you're going contradictory to the way of the Sahaba you call it going contradictory to the way of the believers. Naam. So this is where we understand it has to be proofs and evidence established against them. But alakulihal. So if a person don't pray, he just don't become a kafir because he didn't pray. Because what? It has to be proofs and evidence established against them, showing them the status of the prayer and the importance of the prayer and how yani, the difference between us and them is the is, is, is the prayer. So the one who was at the prayer, the Prophet said, What? For kafir. The one who was abandoned the prayer, he has become a kafir. Right? But it has to be established against the proofs and evidences. So this so just merely not praying doesn't make a person a kafir. But he still fell into kufr because not praying is kufr. Make sense? So if a person leaves the shahada tain and leave off the, the salah, then this is kufr. But the rest of the rest of the uh, the arkan of Islam, if a person never make hajj, he has the money to make hajj, he's, he's, he's physically capable, but he doesn't make hajj nor umrah, then he's not a kafir. He's a sinner. Naam. Being like this decreases his iman, no, no doubt. But he's not a kafir. Now, uh, a person doesn't pay zakat, he's stingy. He don't pay zakat, he's not a kafir. Even though he never pays a cat ever, be not a kafir. It, 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 he's, he's, he's a sinner, he's a criminal, it decreases his iman, but he's not a kafir. Make sense? But yeah. Allah was that. It's so much I wanted to, yani, to, to speak about, but there's no time. But in, in, uh, I, the, the last thing I want to talk about, this is very important. This here is the, really. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this ayah, He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will attain piety. Fasting, from the benefits of fasting, is that an individual by way of it attains piety. Attains piety, attains taqwa. Naam. Let us look at what the ulama said about this. Al Imam Abu Faraj ibn Jawzi قال في التفسير. He said inside of his tafsir, لأن الصيام وصل إلى التقاء. Because fasting is a means by way of which a person will reach taqwa. He will reach piety. He translated piety, right? Reverence, fearing of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Taqwa. I want you for right now, forget the translations. Right? I want you to get the translations. Because translations are our best effort. Best effort. You understand what I'm saying? You don't always get the full scope and scale when dealing with a translation. Translation is best effort. You understand? So forget the translation. Just keep in your mind taqwa. Taqwa. We're going to come back to that. A person... He attains piety. It's a it's a way for him to attain taqwa while he's fasting. Why? 
إذ هو يكف نفس عن كثير مما تطلع إليه من المعاصي. Because a person will be stopping his soul from committing much of what comes, يعني يعني it want to do from evil. When a person fasts, it stops the soul. And I want you to keep all this in mind. Write this down. It stops the soul from doing a lot of what it want to do from evil. A person's fasting right now, right? That fasting is going to stop him from doing evil stuff. You understand? Also, وقيل, and it's been said, لعلكم تبتقون محظورات الصوم. So that perhaps you stay away from those things that should be stayed away from while you're fasting. So a person will avoid those things that he should avoid while he's fasting. But yeah, that makes sense? Khair. Also, قَوْلَ الْعَلَامَ الْعَثَيْمِينَ A. لِأَجْرَ أَنْ تَتَّقُوا اللَّهِ So that you can fear Allah. That the fasting has been written upon us so that we can fear Allah. Now, لِأَنَّ الصِّيَامْ جُنَّةً Because صيام it is a protection. It protects us from المعاصي. It protects us from sin. And thus it is a protection from the fire. لِأَنَّ Now I want you to pay very close attention. Protection from the fire. لِأَنَّ مَنْ صَامَ الرَّمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Because whoever fasts Ramadan out of Iman and anticipation of the reward, then he will be forgiven of his previous sins. A person forgiven of his previous sins, he has no sins. Does that sound like a person that's going to go to hell? Huh? No. no. So fasting in Ramadan is a means by way in which a person could escape hell. So it's a protection from the hellfire by fasting Ramadan. By doing a good deed is a protection from the hellfire. I want you to keep that in mind too. Inshallah Ta'ala, I'm throwing you any uh, dots. We're going to connect the dots soon, Inshallah Ta'ala. So remember, staying away from sin, staying away from sin and transgression, this is from taqwa. Doing the righteousness, this is from taqwa. Naam? Taqwa. Baith. All the shirk they mean, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that perhaps you, yani, uh, 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 fear, eh? Or, or so perhaps that you have taqwa, eh? مِنْ أَجْلِ taqwa, Because of taqwa. Naam. وَهِيَ hikma. You're fasting so that you can get the taqwa. And this is the wisdom. مِنْ إِجَابِ الصَّوْمِ From making fasting obligatory. يَدُلُّ عَلَى هَذَا And what is points to this? And I want you to pay close attention so you can see the beautiful mind of Shikar Uthaymeen. You understand? His deep understanding. He said, this is the reason that the fasting has been made wajib. So that we could attain the taqwa. And what points to this is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَعَمَلْ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابًا That whoever does not leave off false, evil speech and actions in accordance to it, then Allah is in no need that he leave off his food and his drink. Allah Akbar. Person now, you may say, what's the connection? Right? Because Shaykh Ruthay Meen is a genius. You understand? Rahmatullah alayhi. He's a genius. Allah Ta'ala bless him with basira. Deep, profound understanding of the religion. But to better understand this aspect, because whoever doesn't leave off evil, filthy speech, and action in accordance to it, Allah don't need for a person to leave off his food and his drink. Because fasting, what? The purpose and the intent and the goal of fasting is not to leave off food and drink. But it's to leave off false speech and actions in accordance to it. The purpose of fasting is not to leave off food and drink, but it's to leave off the, 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 the haram and that which Allah d- uh, hates and is not pleased with. That's the purpose of fasting. Now understand this. If a person can leave off food and drink, which is obligatory uh, outside of the time of fasting, if you can leave off that which is halal, outside the time of fasting, then undoubtedly you should be able to leave off that which is haram, what you shouldn't be doing never anyway. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Right. So fasting is a training ground. Now, 
let us understand so we can understand better why and how Shayur Thimim was able to connect these two concepts together is because what? It's because what is taqwa? <laughs> what is taqwa? We say fear of Allah, right? But then they say reverence, correct? But it's deeper than that. That's why I'm saying the the, the translation is like best effort. A taqwa lugha fil lugha. Let's start with the lugha. In the language, taqwa means al hadar. Hadar to be aware of something. Watch out for it. Huh? You call a taqaytu shaykh. A taqaytu shaykh. I I was I I I, I yani, uh, what do you say? How you say it in English? Uh, I took caution from something. Huh? Beware of something. I took caution from that. I watched out for it. Right? That makes sense now? Beware of the aware. No, beware. Beware. Caution. Danger. Beware. Right? So a person, he takes caution from something. This is taqwa. In the lugha. This is one aspect of taqwa from the lugha. Another aspect of taqwa from the lugha, which might make it maybe a little more clearer, is that a taqwa here is اتخاذ الوقاية وهي الحفظ الشيء مما يضر is that taqwa is to take a protection another aspect of taqwa is that you take a protection you protect something from that which will harm it so this is why I say hadha, I'm gonna beware of something why? I'm gonna beware because I don't want it to get harmed like a person, he gonna beware of where he put his foot he's not gonna put his foot in a bed trap Right? He's gonna have an hagar minu. He's gonna be, be cautious. Why? He know he put his foot in the bed trap, he's gonna mess his foot up, he's gonna hurt his foot. So in protecting the protection of his foot, he ain't gonna step in the bed trap. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. You understand? But this is from what it means to talk about. The person he takes caution, he beware of something. He takes a shield, in other words, nah. And this enters into an usla taqwa, the other man they mentioned, an usla taqwa here, and yaj'al al abd baynahu wa bayna ma yakhafu wiqaya. Is that a person takes between himself and between that which he fears a protection, a screen. If a person grabs a shield, right? Why are you grabbing that shield? Because he, he's protecting himself from the from the uh, yeah, the tomahawk or from the uh, from the, the sword. But he won't get hit by it. So he puts between him and that what he fears a barrier. This is the origin of taqwa. You with me? The origin of taqwa is that a person takes between himself and that which he fears a barrier, a screen, protection. So, what is the protection now? A taqwa, as the ulama they mentioned, and from the greatest definitions of a taqwa, if you want to say istilahin, is that what? A taqwa and ta'mal. Bi ta'atillah ala nur min Allah tarju thawabullah. Is that thawabullah? Is that a person does obedience? A person is obedient unto Allah out of light, nur, meaning ilm, upon knowledge, upon knowledge from Allah, desiring the reward of Allah. Now, is that a person, he does righteousness, he does the good actions, he does obedience, upon nur, upon light from Allah, nur meaning knowledge, upon knowledge from Allah, desiring the reward from Allah. Naam. Also, وَأَنْ تَتْرُكَ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَخَافُ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ Is that he stays away from that, you will stay away from. Disobedience unto Allah upon light from Allah, meaning upon ilm. A person knowingly stays away from something. Allah Ta'ala says thing is haram, so he knowingly stays away from it, Allah Ta'ala says haram. Prophet made the thing haram, he stays away from it because the Prophet conveyed to him that it's haram to the end. Nah, makes sense? He stays away from it, what? Fearing the punishment of Allah. He fears the punishment of Allah. Makes sense? So when one looks at taqwa, what does it mean to have taqwa? Then they understand first and foremost what enters into taqwa is performing the obligations, the acts of worship, performing the ibadat, 
This is by way a person can get taqwa. Because if a person is scared of Allah's punishment, if a person is scared of Allah Ta'ala uh, uh, being angry with them, being displeased with them, and so on and so forth, then what's the best screen that you can bring between you and Allah's anger is what? It's to do what He told you to do. It's to worship Him and Him alone. So your aqidah got to be straight. You got to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And you got to bring forth the righteous good deeds. This is how you bring a screen between you and the punishment is by doing righteousness, by doing righteous good deeds. If one will reflect upon that and they go back to the first command in the Quran, the first obligation in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala He says, Ya ayyuhan nas, another address talking to all the human beings. Ya ayyuhan nas, i'budu rabbakum alladhi khalqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum ish tattaqoon. O oh, you who O oh, mankind, fear your Lord and fear your Lord who created you and those who came before you, so that perhaps you will. Oh, excuse me, half one, lala. The translation is, O oh, O oh, human beings, O oh, human beings, worship your Lord, worship your Lord, ma'am. O oh, human beings, worship your Lord who created you. And those who came before you, so that perhaps you will get what? Taqwa. Taqwa by way of what? Ibadah. I'budu. Worship. Who? Rabbakum, your Lord. Who created you and those who came before you, so that you can get taqwa. So you can get what? You can get your screen of protection between you and what you're fearing. The adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's by way of what? The ibadah. If a person wants to yani, have a screen between himself and Allah's punishment, then you do that by what? By worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By praying, by fasting, by giving charity, so on and so forth. This is how you get a screen between you and Allah, uh, uh, yani Allah's punishment. That makes sense? Also, by staying away from sins and transgression. By staying away from sin and transgression is how you avoid Allah's punishment. So what is going to be your screen of protection between you and Allah's punishment is that you avoid sins. Just like you will avoid that bear trap because you don't want to get your, 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 your foot hurt. Huh? You avoid sins, right? Because you don't want to be burnt in a fire. You know, if person say bear trap fire, well, you rather bear trap, correct? <laughs> you know what I mean? You rather bear trap. Right. So if you want to keep your whole body safe, then what? You stay away from the sin. And this is why when they ask some of the some of the salaf, and they say from the Umar radiallahu anhu about what is the taqwa, and they and they explain that what? It's like if you're walking down a, a trail lady with bones, you watch where you put your foot. Something Abu Huraira and the like, the salaf. Is that you watch where you put your foot. Why? Out of protection for your foot. Right. So, you got the concepts, right? So the poet, the, the poet said, he said, خَلَّ ذَنُوبَ صَغِيرَهَا وَكَبِيرَهَا فَذَلِكَ تُقَى وَصْنَعْ كَمَاشٍ فَوْقِ الْأَرْضِ دِشَّوْكِ يَحْذَرُ مَا يَرَى وَلَا تَحْرِقَنَّ صَغِيرَةً فَإِنَّ جِبَالَ مِنْ حَصَى Right? He said, what means? Stay away from the sins. The little of it and the big of it. That's taqwa. He said, and be like the one who walks on a path filled with thorns. Yahdharu ma yara. Remember, a taqwa hadhar fil lugha is that he takes hadhar from what he sees. A person walking down a, a, a thing of a, a, a thorns, he's not going to just step haphazardly because he don't want to step on a thorn. Right? He don't want to step on a thorn. So he's going to take care for He's going to be, watch where he put his foot. He's going to be careful. He's going to put his foot in the right place where there's no thorns. And then he said, And do not underestimate, do not devalue the small sin. Do not underestimate the small sin. He said, because verily the mountains are comprised of smaller rocks. You understand? A person, he, he, oh, the small sin is nothing. Small sin is nothing. They accumulate. Oh, that's it. Like a grain of, like a grain of sand. If I took, if I say, hey, put your hand out. You put your hand out. I put one grain of sand. You'd be like, that's nothing. Okay. I give you two, three, four. You still, that's nothing, man. You're just going to say something. Okay, now, by the time I get to 100,000 grains of sand, different story, right? A million grains of sand. Now it done covered you and your whole body. It's different, right? But a grain of sand by itself, nothing. But accumulatively, a whole lot. 
Likewise, the sins. Don't underestimate the small sin because verily what? The mountain is from small rocks. They accumulate. So leaving off the evil enters into what? Taqwa. That's how you gain your protection between you and Allah Ta'ala's punishment. Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, la tuqaddimu bayni yadillahi wa rasoolih, wa taqullah. Oh, you who believe, do not proceed in front of Allah, do not proceed before Allah and His Messenger, and fear Allah. Showing us that what? That not proceeding, not making statements and actions, as Sufyan al he mentioned, that going in front of Allah Ta'ala, ay bil qawli wal amal, by saying statements before we know what's the statement we should say. By taking beliefs, Yani, before we know what's the proper belief we're supposed to have. Don't do an action until you know what is the ruling from Allah and His Messenger. Do not proceed yourself in front of Allah and His Messenger. This is what enters into a person having taqwa. Because when a person does this, he's able to establish a barrier between himself and between the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Ibn Abbas, he said, لا تقول خلاف الكتاب والسنة Don't speak with that which contradicts the book in the sunnah. This is from what? Taqwa. Don't contradict the book in the sunnah. In other words, comply to the book in the sunnah. So compliance to the book in the sunnah, then this is what? Taqwa. Naam? Right. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Ittaqullah haqqa tuqati. Fear Allah the way He should be feared, as they translate it. Meaning, have the right taqwa that you're supposed to have. Now, nah, I'm almost done. <laughs> right. Eh? Yuta'ah fala yu'asah. Obey him and do not disobey him. Yuthqara fala yunsa. Remember him and do not forget him. Wa yushkara wa la yukfar. And he's to be yani, uh, thanked and not and, and, and gratitude shown unto him and he's not to be shown in gratitude and ungratefulness and the like. Right. This enters into the meaning of what is a taqwa. Do the righteousness, stay away from the sin. Look back to the nature of fasting. When a person fasts, by fasting he's what? He's doing a righteousness. But while fasting, the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to do what? Stay away from lying speech and false speech and actions in accordance to it. So by fasting, he's, he's doing a righteousness and he's staying away from sin and transgression. Don't quarrel when you're fasting. Don't yell when you're fasting. If someone abuses you, say, and I'm fasting. So on and so forth. It teaches you, acclimates you to have righteous good deeds and to stay away from sin and transgression. So that enters into what? What is it? Taqwa. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the days that we remember Allah ta'ala, yani maybe the most in the years when we're fasting. You remember. You remember. Naam. Be thankful unto Allah and do not be uh, un, uh, unthankful. Do not show ingratitude. A person, yani, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from how we show thanks. Because showing thanks is not just yani, articulations upon the tongue, but it also enters into actions upon the limbs. So a person, he is fasting, he's showing thanks unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is, yani, he's being patient upon uh, uh, obedience. He's being patient and staying away from disobedience. And he's being patient upon the harms that may come to him from that which is decreed. Like the hunger pains, like the dry mouth, like the food headache, and so on and so forth. He's patient upon that. So he's, he's, so he's showing all of the aspects of what? Of patience. And he is being thankful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that Imam Ahmad, he said what? He said, a sabr is fine. He said, excuse me, he said, Al-Iman is fan. He said that Iman is two, is two halves. Nisfuhu sabr, nisfuhu shukr. Half of it is patience, half of it is being gratitude, being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the delil? What's the delil? Is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yani, Ajib Amr al that is amazing, the affair of the mu'min, Yani, khalas atin, skip to the end of the hadith, in asabahu sarra, Shakar fakana khayrun la when asabahu darra sabar fakana khayrun la is that the Prophet said let me said that the the, the, the status the, the, the situation of the believer is amazing the believer the one who has iman then he mentioned two things right uh, in connection to this it was another sentence between that but in connection to this just skip into the end because of time but you with me okay <laughs> he said if he is um, if he is tested with good times. He's thankful. That's shukr. It's thankfulness. Right? And that's better for him. And if he is tested with difficulties, the ra, 
things he don't like, distasteful things, calamities, he's what? Sabr. Then he's patient, that's better for him. So that's the two halves of Iman. Shukr, Sabr. That's where Iman Ahmed got that from. Right? So when a person examines, he looks at fasting, he sees this there. He sees this there. Thankfulness unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying him, being compliant to fasting, staying away from food, drink, relationships with one's spouse. Huh? And sabr in all of the categories of sabr. You see how outstanding fasting is? But do you see when you understand better the dynamic and the nature of what is taqwa, how fasting is what? So you can fear Allah. So you can have taqwa. So you can have taqwa. Now, Vina said all I have to say is that what? When you look now, what is taqwa? You see how the translation is, is best effort. Best effort. Well, Paul, best effort. But when you understand more in depth, then you realize and you maybe can appreciate more how the, the connection and relationship between fasting and between taqwa. Yeah, I mean, this is from what I wanted to present uh, to the brothers. Uh, we went on long enough, way longer than we had anticipated. Uh, uh, please, uh, Yanni, forgive me for, for being long-winded because we know, as the uh, they mentioned, uh, that the best of speech is what is short and to the point. Don't be long winded because then you cause boredom. People get bored. You know, start daydreaming like, ah, oh, she shut up. So,